Well, good morning. It is good to see you here and it is good to see you online as well. I'm Nicole Riley, the lead and teaching pastor here. And if you'd like to follow along with the sermon, you can find the sermon notes on the app and you can also use the QR code to find them. Well, today we finish our series on the Holy Spirit. Um, over these weeks, we have been talking about the power of the Spirit and what the Spirit is all about, who He is for us. And today, we end our series on Pentecost. Now, Pentecost is this Christian festival that is about the giving of the Holy Spirit to those first followers of Jesus. And in fact, on that first Pentecost is when the church was born. Today, we celebrate all that God has done over all these years through his church, through the power of his Holy Spirit in his church. And as we finish our series today, we're going to talk about where the Spirit is. There is transformation. Would you like to talk about transformation today? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Who is that that would like to hear? I said that, sure. Okay, thanks, Mike. Yes. Yes, sure. Let's hear about it. I think that this is uh, one of the most exciting things about our faith is the power of transformation that God gives each of us. God says to us that you and I can be more than our human brokenness, than our frailty, then our shortcomings, that the Holy Spirit has power to transform us and to transform our world. So let's hear today's text from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only 9 a.m. in the morning. No, this is what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We receive the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives so that we might be transformed. How do we know this? Well, we know this because the scripture uses the word for power that is dynamis. That is the English word for dynamite. A lot of times we think of the Holy Spirit as a bird or a ghost. No. The Holy Spirit is really a stick of dynamite set into your life. It is about power, power to blow through our brokenness, power to blow through our human frailties and our shortcomings, power that moves us from the darkness into the light, power that transforms us. But we know. Sometimes our lives, they don't reflect this power like they could. Sometimes our lives are lived much smaller than what the Holy Spirit has for us. 
I shared last week a little bit about this because I shared how when I was the director of new ministries, I didn't have my own church, and I visited different churches every week. And a prayer I often heard prayed was something like, God, if you are willing, if you could, if it wasn't too much trouble, God, would you help us? Not really a prayer of power. Not a prayer that knows that the Holy Spirit wants to do amazing things in us. When I would hear a prayer like that prayed, it would give me a sense of where that church was and how that church was struggling to embrace all that God had. How do we bridge the gap from where we are in leaning into the Holy Spirit and where we could be? Well, I want to share something with you that's a tool I've used for about a decade now that helps me reflect on the Holy Spirit's movement in my own life. The basic idea of this tool is this. Every week, sometimes it's every day, there are experiences that we go through where God has something for us to learn. They may be big things like a disagreement with someone we love or trouble at our job. They might be something little like once again we're frustrated by how we've responded to something or we're late again for a meeting. Many times they're challenges or difficult things, but sometimes they're beautiful and good things, like a wonderful opportunity or the birth of a new baby. The idea is this, learning to notice these events in our lives and learning to consider how it is that God is using that event to open us to the power of his spirit. The tool is called the learning circle or the kairos circle. The word kairos is the Greek word for time, but not just any time. It's the kind of time where it's a special moment that you should notice. And the circle has six movements. We're called to observe what's happened, reflect on it, put it in context, discuss it with someone in our lives, pray about it, then make a plan out of what we hear God say, and then act on that plan and be accountable. And the idea is this. We can take the events in our daily life and bring them through this process so that we might see where God is and how God is calling us to grow and to open up our lives more to the Holy Spirit. So let me give you an example of this from my own life. A couple years ago, I was in my car. It was about 8 in the morning, and I was stopped at a light in Pasadena. The car in front of me also stopped at the light. When suddenly they put their car into reverse and backed at me, they hit my car. She got out of her car, I got out of my car, and I lost my mind. Like if you had seen me and you were on my side of the street, you would have walked to the other side of the street. I was just filled with adrenaline. I was surprised. I am not a morning person. And all of this came together where I just, I just kind of freaked out. Now. We figured it out, we put it together, I got back in my car, but when I got to where I was going, I was still shaking. I was still upset. And that whole day, I kept thinking about the event, replaying it in my mind over and over again, thinking about what I'd said and what I'd done and how I had not acted in a way that I felt really great about. That night, I took the Kairos circle, the learning circle, and kind of wrote on it. I like to print them out. So I observed what happened. I reflected on my behavior. What did I say? What did I do? I discussed it with Jeff. Poor Jeff, right? He always gets the discussion. And then I prayed about it. 
And I prayed about it not only that night, but I prayed about it for the next couple days. I just felt like there was something there that God had that I needed to see that I wasn't able to see. Now, when you look at the event itself, it might be that you just thought, well, that was just a bad day. That was just some adrenaline rushing through the system. But I knew it was more than that because I knew I kept replaying in my head what I said and what I did. I kept beating myself up about how I responded in the moment. I realized after a good day of bringing this before God and listening to what the Holy Spirit would say to me, that the Holy Spirit let me know, um, Nicole, I think you have trouble being human. I think you have trouble making mistakes. I think you have trouble when you do things that aren't perfect. Anybody else relate to that kind of situation? God showed me that while the accident scared me, I was shook, the car was hit, I behaved badly, but the Holy Spirit showed me that the issue wasn't just my behavior, but that I kept beating myself up about it over and over again. He showed me how I hate to make mistakes, how I hold myself to an impossible standard at times. Seeing that transformed me. God brought to me a, a character flaw that I have and helped me to see other choices and other ways of being. That resulted in my making a plan and my continuing to act on that plan to be more grace-filled with myself and with others. The Holy Spirit wants to reveal to us deeper things. But we need to listen. We need to be open. We need to slow down. The Holy Spirit is available to you. The Holy Spirit is available to me, to any baptized Christian. We all are given the gift of the Holy Spirit, and then we take our whole lives to learn how to listen to his voice and how to lean into his power. It's a journey, and it takes a while. Sometimes it takes forever. Um, I think of John Wesley, who's the founder of what became the United Methodist Church. He didn't really find this power of the Holy Spirit until he was an adult, and he had his Alders Gate experience, where his heart was strangely warmed. That's when he started seeing the power of God and how to live into it. And if we think of those first people who were there on that very first Pentecost, their human faults, their brokenness, their lack of faith, and how God's power and the Holy Spirit took them from that day to where we are today. In my own life, I have found that as I grow, I learn how to lean more into this power, and that this power is very different from the power of just trying harder. That just leads us to be frustrated and burnt out. Instead, this is about the power of God that seeks to be born and to move through each of us. This is what God wants for each of us. Over these weeks, I have been thinking about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit continues to work in all of us. The Holy Spirit continues to transform you and I. The Holy Spirit calls us beyond our comfort zones. And the Holy Spirit is never done with us and is always up to big surprises. So, what's next? How do we take what we've learned about the Holy Spirit and live it out more fully in our lives? Well, I have a couple ideas on what you might do. The first is this. Take the Holy Spirit seriously. I hope over these weeks you've gotten much more of a sense of who the Holy Spirit is and what he wants to do in your life. I encourage you to re-listen to the series that we're just finishing today about the Holy Spirit. You may have missed a week, or sometimes if you're anything like me, I need to hear things a couple times before it really sinks into my heart. So take some time and look more at who the Holy Spirit is. 
We actually have a class right now on the Holy Spirit, and if you'd like to be part of that, you can find out on our small groups page on our website. That will help you connect to people in that group. Second thing I want to encourage you to do is recognize that you may have to slow down to hear the Holy Spirit more. That's one of the things about the life of faith, isn't it? We often just go, 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 and do, 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 and we don't take that time to pause. Um, here's the thing. Your life is a uniquely designed curriculum by the Holy Spirit for you to grow. And that's why if you don't get something, it just keeps coming back over and over again. You experience that, right? You don't get it the first time, just keeps coming back to get it. That's because the Holy Spirit wants you to get it. So slow down, take some time, reflect, especially on those things in your life that just keep coming back over and over again or are causing you anxiety or stress. If you'd like to learn more about the learning circle that I use, I'd be happy to share that with you. Here's my email address. You can email me, and I have a nice little two-page thing that talks more about this process. So you can try it out yourself and see if it helps you hear the Spirit's voice. But email me today, because on Tuesday I go to New York for my son's graduation. Okay? So do it like you could email me right now, right? That's the great thing about all of this. Okay. Let me close by saying this. Holy Spirit is God's power among us all. It is not a simple dove or a wimpy ghost. It is a stick of dynamite. And that stick wants to blow up the barriers in your life, bring down the walls in your life, and move through where you are stuck. You are God's beloved. And God has given you the gift of his spirit. And it is there for you, ready, if and when you want to draw from it. So let us embrace the Holy Spirit's transforming power. And may it change us all. Let us pray. Loving and holy God, we are grateful that your power is here in this congregation, in our leaders, in those who are bringing us music today, in all of us who are here in person and online. Your Holy Spirit's power wants to blow up those barriers and blow through those walls and move through where we are stuck. And so today, we call out to you for that. We don't just wait. We call out, and we ask for your help. We ask for your power, and then we are willing to hear, to process, to follow, and to pray so that we might live more fully as your people. All of this we pray today in Jesus' name. Amen.